Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Benos Podcast. And today's episode features Martina Motum. Um, she's the wife of Brock Motum, who most NBA experts will know. And it's a different podcast because we talked about her life, her background story, and her daily challenges that she deals with as the player's wife. Uh, what not many people think about, I think it's important to also register and understand that there's a certain amount of sacrifice and a certain amount of um, challenges to deal with on a daily basis. And Martina talked today a lot about her challenges, uh, a certain amount of identity crisis and certain things that she had to deal with and get within herself to find out what it really is all about. Uh, she also talked about her career, rejuvenating her career, and we talked about some advice that she had for men and women in this uh, side of the story, in this special business that we're in. So uh, it's a unique story. It's a unique life that we're living. And uh, she and her situation is definitely doing so as well. And uh, please enjoy. Please subscribe to this channel. Also find Martina on, on Instagram and, and uh, YouTube. Uh, please leave a comment. Uh, leave a five-star review if you liked it. And uh, we'll be looking to add some more content here pretty soon. So I appreciate you being here and uh, listen to me soon again. Martina, what's up? What's going on? What's up? How are you? I'm good. Welcome to the best, biggest sports show in, uh, in the world. Not yet, but in oh, Europe, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're growing. We're growing. And you're the first woman on here. So congratulations on that. I'm very, very proud. Thank you so much. <laughs> so yeah, I, I was, I was thinking of uh, different topics, and I thought of 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 uh, a topic that's very unusual because nobody thinks about it, and I don't know how much it affects you to be the wife of, you know, if that's if you have if you ever had issues or maybe it changed with time, but I wanted to talk about the life of a wife of a player's wife. And that's why I thought of you and I thought to invite you to talk a little bit about your background and a little bit about the life behind the scenes. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah, so it, it's, I don't know, do you just want me to go straight in and tell you? <laughs> no, I, I, will, I will ask, I will drill you with questions. Don't worry, we will, we will okay, get cool. to that. Okay. But, but to give, to give um, I just wanted to give some context for the, for the listeners and the viewers. Um, so before we go into the specifics, because this is, uh, you, you know that for sure, this is an educational podcast. So we're trying to educate people in all different directions because the sports industry, especially basketball, has lots of different avenues. And uh, today we're going to explore your avenue. But before we go into the specifics, we're going to explore a little bit of your background. So you are from Lithuania. And un unlike many people that, that, that don't understand, we are Lithuanians and we speak English, which is fine with me. But uh, this is for a bigger audience. And maybe you can give a little bit of background uh, where you grew up in Lithuania and where you, how you met Brock Modem, who was a player at Jagers at that time. Okay, so I'm from the best city in, in Lithuania, Konas. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, I'm wearing green too, so. <laughs> I know, I'm like, who represent it? <laughs> um, yeah, so I grew up in Konas, was born in Konas. Uh, my parents moved to Denmark when I was 15. I moved right, uh, right after a year, so I was 16 when I moved to Denmark. Finished a ninth uh, grade in Lithuania, but that was, uh, that was my last. And then uh, in, I started, I finished 10th grade in Danish, which I actually, I didn't know Danish before I moved to Denmark, but uh, I took half a year in 10th grade to actually, there was a seat teacher sitting next to me trying to uh, like teach me and I had like extra lessons and whatever. And then the year after, then I started the 10th grade. So I did 10th grade basically two years. You know, the same, mm -hmm. the same um, thing, uh, but in Danish and I then graduated 10th grade in Danish, which was, I mean, pretty impressive thinking about now, back then I just, okay, that's something I had to do, you know, yeah, yeah. but uh, it's a crazy language, <laughs> a crazy language, um, but yeah, I still remember some things and speak it sometimes when I, when I hear it, it's quite fun, 
Um, then I, uh, my high school was international baccalaureate, which I did also in Denmark, but I lived at the boarding school because at that time uh, there was no, uh, like very few international schools. So eventually I, I changed, uh, I guess I, I was not going to do high school and university in Danish because my level was like, okay, I graduated things and stuff, but like I wanted to do at that time, I wanted to do sports journalism, which is funny because that's what I'm doing now, but <laughs> you know. <laughs> But um, but I was my Danish wasn't good enough to do sport like journalism in Danish, you know. So like I went to um, international school, and that was three years at the living at the boarding school, and it was so much fun. International crowd, awesome. My uh, bachelor, uh, I moved to London to do my bachelor in sports market uh, sports management, and then my uh, master's is with Euroleague. Uh, it's also sports uh, marketing and management. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you see that basketball pattern or, or sports pattern, uh, to be precise, going along. But um, I guess the love for basketball, it started very, very young, like when, you know, Kona sport, uh, Sports Hall, like that was like one of my first games when I was 12. And I was like standing there that made, made such a big impression on me. And I played basketball at the time as well. Um, I just remember one thought that like, like it made me so happy that 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 being there that I was like, I need to do everything possible to like be a part of this. Mm. And now being a wife, it's weird because that was not the point then. Like, that's not what I was thinking back then. I was thinking like, what can I do to be a part of like organization? You know, I had 12, what kind of organization I know. I'm not, I don't know yeah. much. I was like, okay, yeah. could I be a female coach? I was telling people, I was like, telling my dad, I'm like, I'm going to train. Cause me and my dad would watch your league every Thursday back then. Like that was our, our ritual. And, um, uh, it's like that. I don't want to be a female coach. Yeah, that is like you know. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> he wasn't like ruining my dreams at that, but like you know, even now thinking like, okay, I can't. I could, you know, female coaches and female basketball, but I was I was interested in male basketball. I I love it to date. And um, so then I was thinking sports psychology. I was thinking what like what is possible like make myself like a job, like a uh, in the in the club, and then um. Long story short, I, after London, finishing my bachelor, I um, went to your league uh, masters, which was like doing all the, all the time I was studying, uh, I was already dreaming about the end goal, which was for me, end goal was, was the masters. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so that was a great experience. I met a lot of people and I got an internship in uh, Jalgiris. So that was uh, and this weird because that was not yeah. That was that was the year. Was that the first year Brock was in Jalgiris, or was that was the first year, right? Yeah, that was. We literally came. I came to Lithuania after nine and a half years of not living in Lithuania, and he came to Lithuania for the first time. Like, oh, that summer he was playing. Uh, what was it? Year. No. What year was it? What year was it? Two thousand fifteen. It was so, like World Cup, like. Uh, Australian national team was there. You know what I mean? They were playing something. So maybe it was the summer of 2014 because it was the yes. it was the national it was the Spain World Cup. So yes, maybe because exactly. okay, they came for friendlies almost every summer. So some some summers they came uh, to to Lithuania uh, without being a uh, a World Cup or Olympics. They came just to have some uh, friendlies and then they yeah, went in back to LA or something. Bro, yeah, yeah, still yeah. talking about it. He's like. <laughs> That's all I knew about Lithuania. I was like, yeah, that's definitely uh, with all the respect to Cholet, like this is not the <laughs> best place to, you know, show off our country. Like for yeah. people from Australia, like if they're coming, they don't know where the where the hell they're coming, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. if they come to Cholet, they're like, where am I? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So so he we a month plus minus, we we moved to Lithuania at the same time. Mm -hmm. And you and then, like uh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. And then I think two months in, I, we met at the club, obviously. At the club, like at the, at the, at the club or at the club club. <laughs> I know at the basketball club. Okay. So I'm such a basketball, like, like for me, the only club that exists is a basketball club. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I get it. Yeah, I was, me. I was just, I was just joking. <laughs> no, but, no, I, I get it. But yeah. So at the basketball club. <laughs> So you you started to date, and did you did you go into any kind of with kind of any kind of expectations into the relationship once you started to get serious, or was it just kind of open and see? Because 
you know that basketball players are basically nomads. You know, they they move around, they move around the world, and there's a certain type of um, mentality or a certain type of attitude you have to have, knowing what you're getting yourself into, because the stability of a, a structured life, a traditional life, is not present. So there is a certain amount of time, and and the players players life is different than coaches life because players life is limited to a certain age and then you know maybe afterwards there's a certain sort of direction but with when Brock's in the middle of his career you met you knew that you was going to move so did you go into some kind of expectations or did you have a little open mindset to everything so at that point like you know you meet and dating you kind of don't like you like each other obviously so you keep seeing each other and then you know that period like it's like you kind of kind of like it's too soon to think about the future like that but like yep. you enjoy each other's company you know mm -hmm. so it was a time that um obviously i wasn't i wasn't thinking about the first of uh, the first whole season uh because it was just you know new and fresh and i had my new job and everything was like you know it was amazing then the first time so during the uh, that summer the off season brock went to the olympics and uh, mm -hmm. in rio then uh, he was gonna come back to konas mm -hmm. and uh, that's when we moved in together so then that season we lived together it was cool and suddenly like okay this the he's doing very good like the second season for brock and childers was amazing and uh, okay that's now we're in it's like okay the moving is coming into the picture you know yeah so i mean i guess you don't you see basketball players around that okay they they move around but like it doesn't at those those two years the first like i'd say one and a half years maybe you know uh it doesn't i wasn't thinking about it like strat strat strategically if I yeah may say that yeah. you know yeah. like oh what's gonna happen until it's like okay the end of the second season or towards the towards the end that you're like okay most likely we will be moving so do you and do you do you think about like your giving up your your career or uh, job wise and thinking about like all right now i'm gonna have to because there's a certain amount of leaving behind but also leaving the door for something new ahead of you you know like there's give and take in that so did you think about your job your career at that time or was it something that you're like all right, next step, next stage, open, whatever happens. So there was a little situation that happened. So for last five months of the season, I was not working anymore. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that so sort that... of chapter was over for me before we had to move. So that okay. made things very easy because as you say, making the decision of uh, like stopping my career and, uh, you know, totally and moving to another country which i technically moved to back to lithuania after all this time to start my career you know yeah it would yeah. have been very tough well um well that sort of was uh, a decision made for me kind of already. Yeah. so it was yeah. it was easy i was i was sort of like okay i'm i'm done with that chapter so what's next i was i guess i was taking it in like with the open open hand and open hands and mind you know that's I was that's yeah, it was it was the decision was made for you, basically. I mean, it was easier not for you, but the decision was easier to make and not think about the repercussions of giving up, leaving something behind. You were just kind of like a free agent, basically, in terms of in terms of job. And then you yeah. you you did move to Istanbul. That was the next step. And uh, obviously, being in a foreign country, both of you together, but Brock being on the road a lot and you spending some Time, alone time in an, in this in a foreign country in a different country how was that for you what went through your mind how did you deal with the loneliness that comes of of a of a uh yeah of a, of a expat in a foreign country so uh another thing that with moving i already i guess i didn't have a big problem with at all because i've already moved from lithuania to denmark to london back to lithuania you know so yep. that for me was not like I already lived the next bad life, sort of. So it was yeah. I was like, I was excited more than anything. Yeah. Uh, and then um, Istanbul, in the beginning, to be honest, it hit hard. Like, because you're in, first of all, even if I'm not, I wasn't working in Lithuania for the last few months, but like, it's still sort of your environment that you, you know, it's my home country after all, even though I have not lived there for almost 10 years, but like, it's, it's you know, your language, your 
over the last two years living there, I made new friends again and like, you know, created our, my life there. And then Istanbul was like, okay, so first of all, I know nobody. <laughs> it's, a, it's a new place, new environment. As I love Istanbul and Turkey so much. I say that after th having lived there for three years now, but like um, in the beginning, it just looks so crazy. <laughs> like and new language too. I mean, there's new there's, language. Yeah, new language, but like and like, this life. I think it takes a while to get used to. Like they live, they live a crazy life. They drive crazy. They you need to just get into that. You know, get into that groove, Rhythm. groove of things. Rhythm. And, <laughs> yeah, and like it takes it takes a while. It can take you by surprise. You know, in the beginning. So, so it was crazy. Like we, and funny enough, Brock left, we moved to Istanbul and he left, I think two days after. And we were, we moved, we moved from Australia. So jet lag and everything. And then two days after he leaves for Slo Slovenia, Slovakia, I think, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I don't remember. That anyway, preseason started. So he goes, right. Yeah. And I'm there. I remember this. So that like, that probably puts, um, it's a good story to, to, to explain how like the Istanbul life started, like the uh, manager of um, FS, he's like, oh, you need to pick up the car. And I, the first thing I said when I landed, I was like, I'm not driving here. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, I need to pick up the car because Brock is gone for, I think, two or three weeks, you know, so and I'm not going to live in the hotel for those weeks. Like I, I need to move our stuff from the, ho from the hotel to the apartment that we picked in those two days that we were there before he left. So, and he, someone picks me up from the hotel. I drive to the club. They're like, okay, this is the key. This is your car. Uh, peace. <laughs> I was telling you, I, it took me like good 10 minutes to like make myself start to start driving. And I'm like, I love driving. It's not like, you know, I'm okay. Probably ever, everyone has said it ever, but like, I'm a good driver. I feel very confident behind the wheel. That just, Turkey, like it hit me in the first, like it just, they just, there's no rules. You know, I'm just used to a little bit of rules while driving. So that was, I was like, I sat there and like, it was so hot and I'm sitting there in the car that I'm like, I need to go. <laughs> like, I have to like prepare myself for this to, to like, for the first time to hit the streets, you know, of Istanbul. And like, I was like, okay, fine. Like I did it. And, and now I just, there's nothing more I like than driving in Istanbul. I think this is the adrenaline I get and like it's totally my style and it's crazy and I love it. That the first first impression I was like, oh geez. Yeah, that's Istanbul is the only city, and I've traveled a lot. I've seen, I've been to basically every continent so far except Africa, but uh, and Antarctica I haven't been to, but I I I Istanbul is the only city that if i fly over and I, I see the whole the whole structure of the city it's the most intimidating city uh, i would call it it's a mega megapolis you know like you you just don't you see that and it's just a whole bunch of ev of everything in once and at, you know in in one area and you feel like you feel like an ant going into there so i can imagine for the first time driving it's gonna it's gonna be a anxiety a constant anxiety attack <laughs> for sure and like i didn't know where the shops were i didn't know anything and everything i look on the map it's like 25 minute drive and I'm like from the club to our home it was like seven so i was like fine you know and i'm like i need to go to the shop but it's like oh my god it just it was crazy but then now looking back at like the i love going to Istanbul, and i it's weird because that city feels like home you know mm -hmm. to some extent it feels like home like you know things you know for brock and i always say like if you can in the city like this, if you can go from for a point A to B that is far enough without a map, like yeah. you, you're cool. You know yeah. what I mean? And that's such an accomplishment when you actually finally do it. You know, because it's like, like I said, it's, it's gigantic achieve so, achievement. Yeah, exactly. It's an achievement. It makes you feel good. And then every time now when we go back, it's like it really feels like home. Like it's a, it's an amazing place. So, so during that time when you were alone and you were building. You're, like you said, you left a lot of a uh, lot of your life, a lot of friendships, a lot of family behind. How did you end up building your social circle back up in Turkey, in Istanbul, without knowing the language? And you know, obviously, like you're probably interacting with the with the family of the teammates, your family of and the club. But how did you um, 
embrace. I like to call this, this this English word embrace is the probably the one my, one of my favorite words because you can embrace any situation. It's just on your, your mindset. How did you embrace? How did you go through that period of building a new social life and circle in Istanbul? So I think in this life of basketball, whatever, like it's it's you get to like you're kind of thrown in to a group of people already. You know what I mean? Which makes it a lot easier. It's not like it's not like we have to move. You know, we moved quite a bit. Like it's not that we have to move to completely a new place that is like we know nobody. You always like Brock has eleven teammates plus coaches, and they have wives. Yep. They have you know what I mean. So it's already like a circle, and everyone's really friendly, and it's it's amazing. Like I guess I never really had a problem uh, meeting people and like socializing and talking. Like that's I love doing that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, you know it's never been like a thing for me so i i enjoyed it it's it's always like you find your people you know mm -hmm. over over a certain amount of time you just find people who like you get along with better or or like you know it's you know more like your vibe or whatever but um uh, but i wouldn't say like there's never been bad people do you know what i mean it's always yeah, like yeah. people on your level people on like your situation so it sort of like makes it easy. Like you can talk to the wives about like things that, you know, I sometimes say that only basketball wives would understand, you know, like, yeah. cause if you talk to anyone else about your problems with people like, oh my God, you're so like a problem. In normal <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah like yeah. They, they put it down sort of because they, everyone thinks that oh, this is such a glamorous life and this is so awesome and you should have no problems whatsoever. But like, yeah, yeah. but then, you know, the end of the season hits and you're like, okay, are we packing the things? Are we, is the plus one on or like, do you know what I mean? All these yeah. things, like, do we pack and like pack everything and we're out or like, you know, the little like natural things that you do, like, you know, yeah, so so that's that, that's the thing that like we can get to as well. Like, what's what the, what are the major question marks during the season, during the life of of like behind the scenes that you have as Brock's career is going on, and you have like there's a lot of uncertainty with contracts, but you do you talk it out? Do you wait to the situation? Like, you have to be very flexible in that kind of lifestyle. You do, and I guess you want it or not, however flexible you are, like the it's still stressful if the situation occurs you know what i mean yeah yeah so like uh i always tell brock which is like i don't know i don't know if men do that because he looks at me weird when i tell him i was like just listen to your gut <laughs> i listen to my <laughs> gut instinct, only like, i listen to my you, gut you only. know what i mean so, and i think you have to like work on it to know what like you know what i mean if you've never listened to your gut it's hard for you to just start listening to it but like when you feel things like, I don't know. It's really hard to understand. Like, people yeah. don't, I don't want anyone to think that I'm like crazy, but you no, know what no, I mean? I, there are things where yeah. I'm like, okay, I just, I just feel if it's a good thing, if it's the right thing, if it's not the right thing. And I'm like, I push Brock to do that. But if, if a person is not used to doing that, he's like, what? You know? <laughs> so I think that, um, yeah, like, I don't know. So you just wait it out. You see, you see what's happening. And of course, sometimes you, you know, you make decisions that, you know, maybe you should have not made that decision. <laughs> Things so, happen. So, so during the time when you're alone and did you, you obviously contemplate a lot about your own life, about what you're doing there. What you did you did you ever experience some sort of identity crisis where you thought like, who who am I and what am I doing here? What's my career? What am I? Because because Brock's life is going. Like Brock is living the team life. He's he's playing. He's practicing. Preparation. He comes home. He leaves, and you're there. You obviously, like you said, you have you have acquaintances uh, from the club, from the other teams, uh, teammates, wives, and but at some point you go into your own self and you listen to your gut and you're thinking about your mind. Like you can't get out of your own head sometimes when you're by yourself and you're thinking about what the hell am I doing with my life? Was that something you know, that was occurring? That was for sure. That was for sure really hard. Like so. Yes, like what am I doing? Because, like you said, he is progressing in his career. Like he is, he's doing things for himself. Like you know, for yeah. us. But like, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, he's like, well, me. Like, especially when I working for Jalgiris and uh, I was doing, you know, I was doing uh, YouTube, I was doing uh, videos, interviews, and I was doing uh, social media uh, communications. I love that part of sports, and uh, 
I think I really found my fit in that sense. Mm -hmm. So it was hard to then try to find something like I got, I had my dream job already, you know, and by the time that I was 27, I already had my dream job and like, it's, it's done now. Like Mm -hmm. what is the next thing that I could do that I'm not just going to sit at home. Like, it's just, it drives my, myself like crazy. I could drive myself crazy if I would just do that. It's just impossible for me. So, um, there were things that I'm like, okay, what's the next dream? Like, what could I do? Because potentially you can have, you know, <laughs> you have the like sort of resources a little bit to like learn anything what you want. You can start whatever you kind of, you know what I mean? Yeah, you yeah. Can start anything. But for me, it was really tough to to find that thing, like to find what is the next thing that like I love as much as I love basketball, you know? So how and did you go? That, how did you go about? Where did you? Where did you? Because I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm keep dig- digging now. Because I feel, I feel like you're going somewhere now towards the path of. Uh, I hope I'm not gonna get emotional here, but. <laughs> no, we're gonna get both emotional because I'm an emotional person too. But there is some sort of like, discover rediscovering yourself, right? So, so what were the what were the 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 hooks that you found to hang on to? So. In the beginning, I really, meditation was my thing. Like okay. I would do just to like keep myself sane a little bit, you know, like, cause there would be so much emotion like there and there. And then when, since I said, like I said, my, the basketball thing was always like, and still is like the love, love, the, my passion, you know? So like finding something else that's kind of, I would like doing, it was yep. really hard. So like, and then there's so many ideas that I have and suddenly I, I'm like, I always keep pushing them down because I'm like, it's, I just want to feel that passion for, for something as much as I did before, you know, and then it, it's really hard. So like uh, meditation helped a lot. Uh, calm app for the win. That was amazing. Uh, um, so another thing, working out, I worked out a lot since, you know, I've, I mean, I've been active for my whole life playing basketball and whatnot. And, um, and then, uh, so there was a gym in our building, which literally, Brock would go to practice, I'd go to the gym. Yep. I'm like, he, he's, he's, he's to this day thinks I'm crazy. He's like, I, I don't, he's like, I don't know if I would work out as much if I was not playing basketball. And I'll, he's like, how can you motivate yourself so much to actually go there every day? I'm like, I don't know. Cause otherwise I know, you know, something bad would happen. So, <laughs> so 100%, like, I go 100%, there. 100%. It's, it's, uh, I have to, I can add on to that because uh, like I have, and I, I talk about it publicly too. I don't, I don't care. Like there's some demons inside of you that I, that, that inside of me as well. Like I have to conquer them because they come out. And especially because I'm naturally active. I'm naturally really like, uh, creative. I try to think, I try to do th- certain things. I have to d- discover when I travel, I try to, and, and if I don't do something for a couple of days and then my body's used to working out, I go crazy. So it's, there's, there's a certain amount of, and Joe Rogan talks about it, there's a certain amount of energy you have to expend to, in order to calm yourself down from the inside because you conquer them and it's something, something calm comes over you because people like you, like if you're sitting all day and you just let the mind, mind race, you don't do anything, you start getting sluggish, you start feeling depressed, you start feeling a little bit lazy. And this thing's, it starts, it starts, it's a trickle down effect. It starts crumble, like you, you crumble from the inside. So whenever I feel that oncoming and I feel sometimes there's anxiety comes over you, I have to, like, I can't run too much because of my knees, but I try to work out. I try to run, I try to break a sweat. And then at some point it just kind of, once you break a sweat, you, you raise your, uh, your, your blood levels and then your, your blood pressure. And then it just kind of like, it takes the opposite effect. It's counterintuitive, but it, it does help to calm you down. And especially like, I'm going to, I'm going to go to the third thing where books I read and read and read, but like, I could not necessarily read and focus because like you said, like the mind, it just goes, goes, goes. And I feel like, okay, I'm having a coffee and reading a book, but at the same time, I have to reread the page like twice because like my mind just goes, you know, and it annoys me. So then after the gym, then I can actually read, you know, because my body's already like, okay, I've, I've, you know, done the work now, like, yep. so I can like calmly, you know, read. So I think like yeah, meditation workouts and books were like the saviors for the first time. Like it, it was, it was stressful. And sometimes I could feel the stress creeping on, like my stress of being lost, yep. creeping onto Brock. And he's like, 
but you're you're just because I, I would I couldn't stay still like I do do this do this do this do that even if it's like cleaning the house because like I just can't sit down and like okay you know yep so like anything anything what can happen he's like oh my god welcome home to this art gallery like you know, <laughs> you make fun of me I, now it's like better but like I just felt like I had to do something at all times because I'm not working and I'm not working on myself in the sense of like my my job that I would love to do so I try to fill that time with some other things you know and so, he would come home and he'd be like you know what I would just he's like I would love if you would tell me after I came home from practice that all you did was binge watched a season of something on Netflix <laughs> and I'm like yeah no <laughs> nah. I'm I'm the same I'm the same in terms of activity like I feel my biggest one of my biggest fears there's I have a couple of them but I, one of my biggest fears is wasting time on this on this on this earth you know like I don't want to feel like I sat all day at home and I didn't do anything because it feels like I I'm I'm here to do something creative I'm here to do something and to uh, create something to leave something behind and kind of be useful so to me my question to you my question is the how did you discover your purpose on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, like the purpose of like, after you calm yourself down, you work out and you, you're still contemplating about yourself, about your future. So where, where was the kind of like epiphany that you had in terms of your purpose and your rediscovery? I mean, I would say this, there was a time that I tr tried to discover myself in different like ways. And, uh, I, became a personal trainer. So that was one of the things I did. I, I did a course and, and I started working when I was in Istanbul, but <laughs> then, you know, it's like working in Istanbul is, is like, it was sort of on the good days, like 20 minute drive from home on a bad day, it's one hour and a half, you know? <laughs> and I work to train, like to train a girl or two. And then I have to like come back home and I pay more for parking than I have made. You know what I mean? Not, not that it's really mine, not that necessarily i don't want it to sound like arrogant but at that point it's not necessarily you do it for money you know because i'm yeah. like i'm just trying to make myself like yeah sane. useful yeah useful yeah useful. you want to feel and useful yes so so at this point it's like okay but i'm still like not making anything it's just like it's just an outing to the gym that i have to drive for one and a half hours into you know so like i did that for a while and it was cool but you know and yep. i love working out but i feel like i realize it's not i don't necessarily love working out other people like do you know yeah. what i mean yeah i love being because yep. it's like different like maybe they're unmotivated or that or that i'm like it's just sort of like okay like you have to be motivated you know what i mean from my coming from like someone who loves going to the gym it's like it's really hard to like understand how people get tired and unmotivated or there are a lot of things that come across but and then um i try to i try to come up with some kind of business some kind of this some kind of that but it's just like i don't know i and that's back to me like i would always find ways to tell myself why not to do things mm -hmm. like uh, what who am i why i did my youtube channel and then i'm like i talk myself out of it i'm like what what kind of fool am i what am i doing who's watching me like do you know what i mean yeah. and it's terrible and i'm actually thinking of restarting my youtube again you should you should I'm do trying it. to tell myself that this is i'm just doing it for myself do you know what i mean it's yeah. like i think the life like you know, you wanted me to talk about this little life that we're living, you know, and it's, it's interesting. It's not like, it's not, people don't know. And yeah, it's not a standard life. It's not life, a standard people life. People don't understand, you know? Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. But I haven't had a thing of like, but I think it's also a part of identity crisis that I would just always think like, I always wanted to feel that passion that I felt for basketball. And then anything else that came was not even close enough. And then I yep. just drop it because I just kept searching for that one, the same thing, you know? You want to ignite the fire. And I felt that also when I went away, uh, like I was when I was in Moscow and I was not on a, on a day to day basis around the team, you feel like there's a fire missing within you because you have these emotional impulses, your day to day life is different. Then you feel like you also you rediscovering yourself on a different area. So there's like something you give away, but something you take as well. But Jordan Peterson talked about it. Uh, uh, I just listened, I heard it just lately, uh, like a couple of weeks ago. The, the biggest mistakes people do at this, at, the, at like, a, you know, between the 20 and 30 is that they just 
they don't know what to do. They don't know what to do with themselves. They don't know what work to do. And they just don't do anything. They just sit still and they do the same thing over and over. Whereas like you were doing, you tried one thing, you tried a different thing. You try to start a business, you try to be a personal trainer. And at least you go somewhere and you find out that you that's not for you, you can still correct. And you're further ahead than you were when you if you wouldn't have done anything. If you were just sat at home and not knowing what you do, you just kind of sit still and you're still there. So five years from now, you would still be there. But now you already have some accumulated knowledge already about where you where you don't want to be. And then you can, yeah. of course, correct and you can keep going. So I would encourage you to do the YouTube channel if that's what you feel like. And then you feel like after a year or two or three years, maybe it's not for you and maybe something else comes along. But doing is better than not doing. And that's that's my general um, uh, MO. <laughs> like, I don't know mm -hmm. the general attitude that I have. For sure. For sure. I mean, also like learning things about yourself. Like that's that's a major thing, you know? Like Yeah, you're discovering yourself. Like you're doing something yeah. and you kind of like you go into yourself and like, oh, I didn't know I can react like this. I, can, I didn't know I have this in me, you know? So there's certain things that I think people have to do. And I think in your situation is even more special because you are, or you were alone at a lot of times during that during the first period in a foreign country and you had to figure out things on your own. But uh, when Brock comes home or came home and you guys, like, how did you guys balance the time together? Because you have to, you want to make up for some time and you want to spend time together as well. What was the time before the baby arrived? We're going to get to that. But um, when you were trying to spend time together, how did you balance that? And how did you keep keep also in perspective that Brock has to prepare himself for practice, for games, mentally, sleep-wise? There is certain kind of balance, but you also had to have some time together. So how did you how did you manage? How did you plan the time together from when you came back from road trips? So I think he's, uh, I think he's very good at like, not saying that to leave things at work because it's not really possible but like uh when he's at home we would spend sort of okay we have a lot like we love basketball both of us so that's already like even us watching your league at home is spending time together you know what i mean yep and like i love that he loves that then we would just go well i don't know i think i think he's like yeah he's very good at like okay i'm at home now like we're together and, you know, mm -hmm. then we come up with things to do and go explore or eat or whatever. So that's, that would be our time together. Then of course there's like naps and all these things where it's like, I have to be respectful of, you know, I like, okay, it's a pregame nap. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you know, you find out that balance of, of things, uh, I guess, as you go and grow as a couple. And you know, like, obviously there's also like the, the exploring part is huge in a new city, but there is no travel time. Like, oh, let's take a weekend off. Let's take a couple of days off to go during the season to go somewhere and see a different city. There's none of that. So you basically are in the same city and you have to rediscover and find new hobbies together, right? Yeah. And also most of the times I'm like, you know, if Brock finds a cool restaurant that he likes to eat, he could go there for the rest of the season. <laughs> Like he, he doesn't have a problem for me. I'm like, I love to try new things. So in most of the times it would be that when he's away, I go around explore. And then if it's worthwhile, then I bring him on his name next, name, next day off. You know what I mean? So then um, that's, that's probably the dynamics <laughs> to this day. So, so um, once the baby, uh, how, how old is your, uh, your son? Uh, he's two actually a Sunday on Sunday. Oh, nice, nice. Also a May child. I'm a male ch May child as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, so two years. So you he you guys Valencia. were in Valencia. Okay, in Valencia. Um, once he's Spanish, once... Australian, and Lithuanian. <laughs> awesome, great. He can choose. He can choose what he wants to play for. <laughs> yeah. all, all the countries will be fighting for him um to 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 get the, the citizenship um so once once the once once the baby arrived and it changed a lot of dynamics as well i'm sure within within uh the daily structure of your life what were the biggest uh negotiations or the biggest uh accommodations you had to do in terms of like finding the grips of like brock's career and the family life put together you know 
I think that now thinking thinking back to like the first year with a baby, it's like I don't think that as much as like the basketball or Brock's career had a lot to do because the only thing I can think about is COVID. That 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 mm. was the part that like it was just not I can't say ruined, but like it made it really really hard, and I think it gave me a sort of misshapen view of motherhood because you know like everyone says it takes a village and during the first year I was alone you know because the COVID no one could come visit and like I having Brock like leave and I'm alone with a baby and like okay you could get a nanny but then do I want someone out from outside coming into our home during COVID when we live in Istanbul and our, he was born in Valencia then um, but in May so the season finished then we went to Australia spent two weeks in the lockdown in the quarantine wow i don't know how we did it honestly wow and i don't know what was going on through our heads but anyway we did it then we spent a, a month and a half in australia then moved back to istanbul called galatasaray mm -hmm. and that's when like you know city city of so many people like I, i'm not sure i want the nanny to take public transport to come to my home that i can get everyone on the team sick basically you know yeah. what i mean like yeah it's such a thin like thin line and I was like, okay, like, I'll, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. And then you think that you're fine and, you know, lack of sleep, small baby, lack of like figuring everything out. Like it's new, you know? Um, yeah. And then you suddenly feel like, I mean, things that you can do on yourself by, by yourself and like for you are sort of being minimized to the, you know, the lowest. And I'm so happy that I had uh, uh, Edgar Solanova's uh, wife, Mm -hmm. and we have babies they're two weeks apart so and they were living in Istanbul that year so that was like it was amazing that was, was literally like my savior. savior you know mentally because first of all we were going through the same things at the same time with the babies so that's one thing then living in the same city it was really nice um but yeah the tough part was that there was there was no one could come visit uh there's still COVID huge restrictions there and there and I'm like so that mainly was the key of like things that they look so different when the baby came because yep. you know I think that the basketball like we obviously we made it work and you know Brock would still take his naps and you know on game days like he like he, and then he's really nice he would let me slip in sleep in when he's when he's at home you know so like there are things that you just you just work out I don't know mm -hmm. you just you just you know you have to do things and you do it sort of did you feel like did you feel like you were um sacrificing a little bit of of your um like lifestyle and and or do you feel like it was something that you embraced and as well as because there was a lot of challenges with that especially living in Istanbul there's certain frustrations that come in and set in and like you said you had uh, Ulanova's Edgar uh, Ulanova's wife there as well and you could share the experiences which is very very um gratifying for the soul if we think of if we talk about a little bit deeper uh but did you feel like you're like um you're missing out at a some a certain point on 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 other things or was that something that came natural because it was that was a situation the COVID is there you embrace the situation with with the with a newborn kid in a, in a old new city that you already know more or less and I don't know I'm not sure you can if you know Easter if anybody can know Istanbul you ever can know. <laughs> ever <laughs> but but you um you you felt like you were in a different world i can imagine so there's a lot of negotiations a lot of challenges that came with that what were what were like the, the biggest things that you were felt like you were missing out on if if at all well like i think you're right as when you say that i really try to embrace the situation whatever it was you know like i'm i want to believe i'm not like a person who likes to moan a lot about things being bad and whatever like mm -hmm. until until I have a day or two that it, it all sort of weighs down on me finally. And that's when I'm like, okay, for one day I'm broken, you know, like <laughs> I'm like done. Like I cry, I'm like, oh my God. And then I'm like, next day I get some sleep. I get a nap in and that's a life changing thing. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> Try to, you know, look what I always try to look at the life with the, you know, positive, with the positivity. So yeah um so I guess like even though now looking back it's like okay it was tough but at the same time you know I just had to do what I had to do yeah like, it's just 
living the, our life and that's that's what we do so but sleep we, sleep was very important i mean we we oh, both we oh, both have our aura ring <laughs> i free, i check the app that's the first thing i do i'm like okay let's update the app see how my sleep went <laughs> anything about above 90 i'm like whoa today's my day <laughs> With the with the with the kid and 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 especially with the baby with the newborn, I can imagine that sleep pattern was off completely. How did you how did you manage the sleep pattern in regards to Brock's uh, playing and preparation? Because I know some families they when there is a newborn and they have big games coming up or just schedule as well. Sometimes the husband sleeps in the, in a in a living room just to be or in, in a separate room just to be a part and just to have a good night's sleep so they can perform well the next night. Did you, did you guys have something like that where you managed the sleep because of the, because of the baby's sleep pattern? So I guess we were very lucky and we still are. Our baby is like, knock on wood. I don't know if it can change this really suddenly. That's like, <laughs> he's never been like a crier. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like if he's crying, that means, okay, he's got hungry, his napping is changing or he wants to sleep. Like this is like pretty simple. So I think we had it easy in the sense that it's like trying or or then he's sick that one few off times that you know mm -hmm. so like it's not i would just feed him at night and then that's it he doesn't cry like he keeps on sleeping you know so i would have to wake up uh usually like on average like twice and then that's it and so it was easy for brock i don't think he ever really had a, a problem like with then if, if if he has to wake up like during before the game game days like he obviously is not waking up to help me it's not really like i need help because i was breastfeeding till 17 months so like i there's nothing he can do for me yeah, yeah exactly I mean? <laughs> like I'm, I'm i mean i carry the good stuff so um <laughs> he needs me to be the baby <laughs> so why does he need to wake up if i'm yeah. like i can do it by myself you know <laughs> um but then i would rather if, if he can then um if there's no games or he's and he's at home like then i'd rather like sleep in for another half an hour extra than that mm -hmm. that would be my you know so in that sense, I think we were pretty lucky. We never had to had him to like move into a different room, like or to sleep, sorry, in a different room. So he would get his rest. So that was that was pretty that's, key. That was pretty lucky. I mean, that's that's uh that's for an athlete, that's probably the best baby you can have <laughs> in terms of sleep. Although right now it's a little tough because like as I said, he's a, um he's two. And uh when Brock needs to take his naps, I need to get out of the house with him because it's just he act, is very active. active hence uh, probably my genes you know <laughs> can't be mad <laughs> um so like he needs to get into everything and then he's like daddy daddy like he's not around he knows he's in the house so he's like going opening the doors and like i'm like just, okay we're leaving now <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's certain things also i think people don't understand that if you like there's a it's a different it's a different um a career it's a different lifestyle in terms of like basketball athletic athlete preparation naps sleeping early sleep like there's a certain schedule and that all the whole family has to be respectful of that in terms of in terms of leaving because that's like he's working for the family as well like it's it's a it's a it's, it's a performance-based business so and naturally you want you want them to perform as as, as good as they can and now you are also back in performing publicly because you are rejuvenating and starting a career. So there's a next stage also now in, 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 in your life. How do you like you're, you're working now uh, for Basket News and you, are, you, you also have a, a website that, you, that you're running as well, right? Um, that uh, martinamotum.com for everybody who's interested visit visit martina's blog it's a good update but yes have a look <laughs> but there's that's it's a beautiful site it's it's a, it's a very very uh beautiful colors and lots of pictures and and articles and uh you can see you can see your your active lifestyle and that you are a doer you're not a you're not a just a, a sitter you're a doer so but how did you feel going into the next stage and how did you go about finding the next niche while you have a kid while your husband is having a basketball career and you are determined to have also your own identity and your career how did you go about finding the next step i guess you know like i said like i tried tried this tried that that's the only way how you can learn and to everyone who are like 
even now, like I, I do some lectures and um, for students uh, about sports communication, and they ask me, "Oh, how did you know?" It's like without trying, you're never gonna know. You know, yeah. you have to get your hands on things and like to see if that fits you at all. So, like, um, I don't know. I'm not a, an amazing writer, and I wish I was more of a doer. Thank you very much for that. Because uh, <laughs> um, I always give myself a lot of like uh, uh, a lot of shit for not doing more you know what i mean yeah so yeah. like i always think that like i could be doing more anyway but i'm working on that daily <laughs> um but yeah so i don't know i i i did created my blog my youtube channel i was like okay i'm doing this just to like because i have that creativity in me and i need that outlet sort of you know mm -hmm. so that was that was uh a good way of like you know now there are things like that that you can do anywhere from anywhere so as long as you have a laptop and internet connection so we're blessed right. with that um so that i guess makes things easy but then um a few things that happened to me during like while we we're still in, still in istanbul like because i guess being uh in jalgris and you know i wouldn't say a public person but you know talking about basketball and everyone is seeing my videos and interviews and whatever so like I had people coming to me with different sort of projects, mm -hmm. basketball projects, which was a great sort of uh, uh, a little like drops of the life and the work that I love, you know? Yeah. So I worked with the um, um, Lithuanian Basketball Federation on uh, this uh, game app. I don't know if you know for, uh, for Eurobasket mm -hmm. a few years back. It was it's cool. Uh, it was cool. It's something like I've never created before. It's a game, you know, yep. with basketball. So that, that was nice. Um, I was doing a little bit of marketing for that. So those kind of things like kept me in the game, if I may say that. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, uh, and then this summer, I don't know if I like, I don't know if you believe in manifestation. I do. <laughs> and like, I always, you know, I, in the back of my head, my 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 basketball work was always was always there you know mm -hmm. so then mm -hmm. when basket news i was with like daydream about it so when basket news came and like uh said like hey we're creating basketnews.com because previously it was only a lithuanian site mm -hmm. and there they would love to have me for their uh, content creation in english and i was like oh my god that is exactly you know like i don't have a problem speaking english and that's like back into the basketball world and it gives me an opportunity to travel uh, to do interviews in like different year league cities and it's just like it was the best thing that could happen at that time after the year in istanbul where where as i said before it was a little you know a little tough of like motherhood took over that year basically. yeah yeah so so let's let's dig into that a little bit so what exactly do you do for basket basketnews.com in terms of like uh description job description of 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 the the content that you produce and second question is how do you balance that with your kid being at home like you're in monaco right now where brock is playing uh how do you how do you balance the, those two things and um and just basically uh, living life still as normal more or less <laughs> so um my job description is a video content creator. I have a show called N1 on YouTube. <laughs> and it's, uh, yeah, so I have interviews, one on one interviews about uh, with basketball players about it's being called N1 because it's like that's, you know, out, outside of the court yep. things. So, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty fun. I have uh, traveled to, quite a few cities this season and uh, every city I do a few interviews at a time and um yeah I, I I mean I really enjoyed it so far you mostly talk to players uh about about those their their daily lives their daily lives their likes their um I mean from food to cars to uh, now mm -hmm. we started to change a little bit the concept of it and like uh uh we have some trick questions about like you know bench cut or play and you know trying putting putting them in like different I saw situations that. Which, yeah that's which tough. is always fun that's tough that's tough for players yeah, I, know. <laughs> I kind of feel bad I'm, I'm, i still need to get better at it because i feel bad when i see like uh, aaron's aaron white's interview and it's like he's like no no <laughs> and i'm like i was trying to save him which the guys after are like don't try to save him that's the whole point and i'm like okay. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah 
so um, yeah, that's a that's a job. <laughs> And how, how do you how do you balance that with your family life with your with your kid being at home and I, I suppose there's a nanny involved somewhere. No. no. Okay. All right. Kindergarten. Yeah. So I have a kindergarten three times a week now since uh, February. Mm -hmm. So that's been helpful. But um. So like, I would travel once once a month once a two, mm -hmm. once two months basically. Um, for like three days. The first time when I had to travel, my mom was here luckily, so she could nanny. So technically nanny is kind of involved. Um, then I went to Istanbul, I took the baby with me. Baby, wow. baby's name is Maverick, let's call him Maverick. He Maverick, has a baby full right. name, I think. Yes, yes he does. <laughs> I'm very biased. <laughs> but so um, I took Mav with me and uh, I mean, it's pretty crazy because I like, he was already one and a half. So he's full on and you know, me trying to balance that was that was the real deal of trying to balance it you know because like yeah. <laughs> the obviously being there and trying to focus trying to focus on the on the interviews and we also um filmed during the trip which will film like a vlog of the trip mm -hmm. um of like behind the scenes how our our work is um and like day-to-day -day, you know little things because a lot of things that happen and um yeah so having them him there i then well, technically I kind of lied because nanny is involved, but like, you know, not like I don't have a full-time someone here. I just, when uh, I took him to Istanbul, I um, had my, uh, my friend, uh, uh, Erica Balbay, you know, one of the uh -huh. office wives, she, yeah. uh, she uh, recommended a nanny for me. So that was easy because it's like sort of the city I know. I could ask people for recommendations and I, I had the nanny uh, come into the hotel to stay with him while I like leave for for an interview or mm -hmm. while he's napping then we're going to film the vlog you know like mm -hmm. so sort of that kind of thing and then i'm back then we go for dinner with the with Jonas from basket news and like you know we then he's with he's there with us eating like you know it's full on that's full cool on. company cool company <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely the most tiring trip that I've, I've had like i can imagine but you know like another thing like i think you know this feeling when like i don't know I can be tired when I wake up and like, oh, cause I slept. Obviously my sleep is, has been interrupted for the past two years. You know, like I had maybe 10 nights that I've not been interrupted, but that's about it. So like I wake up like, okay, I love coffee. That's one of the things. But then when I have something important to do that day, I like a different, different, like adrenaline. I don't know how I call this, like a different kick. I have a different feeling. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like, I'm not going to, some mornings you can be like a little sluggish, you know, like, oh, okay, where do I start? Kind of. Yeah. But then when the days when you have to do work, like, let's say in the summer, I'm so tired. Like I just, we just flew in there with him and, and then, okay, I have to do these things. Like I'm, I'm not waking up thinking, oh, okay, like, you know, I am doing things now. Like this is, these are the two, three days that it's full on. And then sort of the tiredness after you come back home that's when i feel the tiredness after it's like oh my god what did i just do like it's such, i just took him to istanbul to like to like four flights you know connection flights back from like from nice and like for three days and now i'm back now and then it just suddenly hits me like i'm like oh god what did i do like that is sort of after you know and it's nice that everything is accomplished because i like there's no time to 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 be tired at the point when you're like working 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 Exactly. It's like there's there's a certain amount of adrenaline the whole time in, in you. And then you're just going with the flow the whole time, running, running. And then once you settle down, it's just kind of like everything just calms down and you just probably want to sleep all day long. I can imagine. But Mav is not letting you sleep, probably. <laughs> no, no. But then those are the days when I'm just like, I don't want any, I don't want nothing. Like the day after yeah. the trip, I'm like, uh, I feel like I've talked it out. I've smiled it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, I yeah. have nothing left in me. <laughs> all the, all the muscles are tired. All the muscles are yeah, tired. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. Just done. <laughs> so uh, to finish up our, our, our episode, I have a last segment prepared, which I prepare for everybody. It's my ATO questions. And I wanted to call these the basketball relationship ATOs. So the after timeout plays that, that coaches draw up, I'm going to draw up for you now. And I will... Um, put you on the spot as well. I'm not going to save you like you saved Aaron White. I'm not going to save you. So you, you're you going to have to dig Where's through the those. exit button on the Zoom call? <laughs> <laughs> I have the exit button. Nobody else has oh, the exit no. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's go. 
So um, I, I prepared six ones, but then each one has a separate separate idea behind it. So the first one, the top three attributes for a player wife that you think a player wife should have. You see, I can say that, but then also I've seen so many uh, different people who like, they're amazing wives, you know what I mean? So it's mm -hmm. like, like, I think for me personally, what I think works a lot is that we both love basketball. Mm -hmm. I think that's one thing that we have a common interest in. Mm -hmm. You know, we watch NBL, like Australian league. We watch Euro league. We watch Euro cup, like, like all these things. Like we talk about it. We, you know, so yep. it's, it's a topic. I would say that for, for me, but not for everybody. Okay. I mean, it's, um, it's, that's where we're talking to you. Like the, the most important things that you felt like uh, are important for a healthy relationship in this, in this uh, world. Cause you know, like uh, to add on to that, like I would think, I think that life can get really miserable if you also not, not love basketball or don't yeah. like it. You know what yep. I mean? Yeah. Cause then now at least like I, I always follow, I always, go to the games i you know never missed brock's games even in rio olympics like it's just like it's just you know yeah it's like a passion a it's a passion yeah common interest uh, basketball yeah One. um then being adaptable is that a word uh yeah adaptive yeah being adaptive to different adaptive, situations yeah. yep adaptable so, adaptable is correct yep yeah so like from situations whatever life throws at you really because you know you never know and where are you going next year or not all the time and so adaptability flexibility more or less right yeah yeah and like open-mindedness if that mm -hmm. makes sense mm -hmm. also like i think like I, I think that um understanding that his life his career has an expiration date mm -hmm. you know so that's another thing like I could say, oh, but I want to work too. And I want to like do things now. But for me, it doesn't really have an expiration date sort of, you know, if I really wanted to and things felt the way I would like them to, yep. I could work like further until, you know, whatever age. Well, uh, Brock's career now, that's what he's doing. You know, he's trying to, you know, it's just limited amount of time. So what I, all I can do as a supportive wife is now to like, you know, the main focus is still him. Mm -hmm. You want it or not, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know where I was going with that, but one of the, it's not one of the points probably, but just probably to add on to the second one. <laughs> yep. Yep. It's, uh, it's adaptability. You're adapting to Brock's lifestyle. Yeah. Um, and third, I don't know, you know, a positive outlook on things. Mm -hmm. I think it's really hard. And I've met people before that I was like, not many though, but you know, when everything is bad, but it's mm -hmm. not bad. Like they just make it sound like everything is bad. It's hard. Like even like me hanging out with these people, I'm like, after I'm like, Oh, I feel like heavy, you know, <laughs> I'm like, no, things are fine. Did you know yeah. there are people like that? So yeah. I, I think like, you know, less moaning and more being grateful for the way things are like just lightness, positivity and gratefulness. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, being more grateful for the situation and because it is it is it is a is positive lifestyle compared to a lot of like majority of the world. So it, there is a positive outlook that's necessary and a reality check that many people have to go through. But th those are and three it's good. Temporary too, you know. If it's even if it's like bad sometimes, it's always temporary, sort of. You know. Yes. Yep. Yep. I agree. Uh, next one. Which are the pitfalls? Oh, this is more like a relationship question, but I, I, I am like just, just in general, because specifically to a player's lifestyle, which pitfalls to avoid when, when uh, being alone um, while, while Brock is not around or while the second, so your better half is not around? Like what's, what are the pitfalls to avoid? You know what I mean by pitfall? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... Like closing out of, from the world, maybe like, you know, just like, cause then it's depressive, mm -hmm. you know, you can get depressive. Like mm -hmm. it's, and then, as I said, cause you are alone a lot of times and you close out of, from around, from the surroundings, from people around you, then it can be like a hundred times tougher, yeah. you know? So I think that, I think that that would be one of the things like there, whatever city you are in, whatever place you are in there, there's always things to find that you like to do so i think all you need to do 
as a wife, not that I'm giving advice for wives, but like just to find that little thing that, you know, makes you like happy. Like, I don't know, yeah. for me, like second year in Istanbul, I started playing tennis because that was my childhood dream. And like, I, that was like that I always wanted to learn. And I was like, okay, I mean, it's a great place. Why not? You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Be open. Like so do, do, do it, do it. Yeah. So that definitely like for me that that's, that's the, that's a big thing. All right. Uh, third thing, biggest career advice for a player wife. Well, you know what? I'll say this. It kind of sucks. This whole thing when I'm like, I was working before being just Martina. Yeah. <laughs> and then being Martina Modem doing the same work. It's like, okay, first of all, is she, you know, people who wouldn't know my, like the way my career went from the beginning and like not a lot of people know, I guess, like that yeah. I've been into this. It's like, oh, is she doing, how did she get here? Is she yeah. here because she's wife? You know what I mean? Like yeah. there's yeah. so many stereotypes, so many stereotypes that I was mm -hmm. like, but then on the other side, on the other hand, when it's like, girls, I, I don't know how to even say that. <laughs> I need a minute. <laughs> Take your time. Take your time. That it's it's just it's tough. Like being a woman in a men's world, take it as the sports industry, as basketball industry. Yep. It's like it's kind of like I'm not I'm not crying and like oh it's so bad. No, but it's still like it comes with different, you know, like I said, stereotypes, different, different things. So like and then being a basketball wife or like yeah, being a Brock's wife at this point, it's like, it's either in some, in some people's view, it can help in some people's view. It's like, it's an advantage or a disadvantage, you know what yeah. I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's, it, I guess it's, it's just different. But that's when you like going back to your positive outlook, you look at the positive side of it, not the negative side of it. That's, that's important to realize as well that, you know, you have a positive outlook on things and it's not because of Brock that you have this job. It's because of who you are as a person that that gave you this opportunity yeah yeah for sure for sure it's just there was um like to add on to the going back to the identity crisis like in if i could call that in a or i could call it that in a symbol it's like um before when i was in lithuania i was like oh martina you know from from jalgiris you know yeah yeah that's like the street name do you know, you know what i mean yeah. And then I can come to Istanbul and like not many people know what I was doing. And I'm just like, oh, that's Brock's wife. So that was another big thing of like, it's just a name change, really, you know? Yeah. yeah. So like suddenly when I was like, oh, Martina. And then they knew me maybe before they knew Brock in that sense that I started, you know, a few months earlier in Chalikers than, than him, really. Like, uh, so in that sense, but then being just Brock's wife, oh, Brock's wife. Yeah. You know, I felt like inside me, like I'm a passionate person. I'm an emotional person in a sense. So like inside me, I'm like, I'm so much more than that, but like not in a bad way. Like I love being Brock's wife, you know, like yeah, yeah, that's yeah, an yeah, amazing yeah. thing to be called. Like, I love that. But at the same time, I would be like, like, you know, like you guys don't know, like, you know, sort of, I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to, yeah, I, hard I, to I, make I, you understand that. I totally understand. I totally understand when you feel like you already have accomplished certain things and you feel like you are somebody, you feel like you have a, a little bit of um, identification, you know, you have an ID and then all of a sudden it's, it's like going in and like um, uh, quotation marks, you know, just the wife of Brock Modem, like, you know, like people, like, People don't understand that everybody has was also a person beforehand and nobody yeah, wants to be exactly. just somebody, you know, like just his brother, just whoever. And that's a certain thing to dis distinguish. And I think it takes a strong person to deal with that and to understand that like, ah, oh, this person just don't know, you know, he, he, he or she just don't understand. And that's fine. Like that's, that's their problem. I know who I am. And it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a reality check. It's a, it's a check for yourself. Like, you know, like, Ooh, like that kind of hurt. That's kind of like that's a, that that stings a little bit, but it's their problem because they don't know. You know, like I have to deal with it now, but it's in, in reality I can't let those emotions affect me because that person just doesn't know. You know, 
for sure for sure but like adding on to the that time in, in this moment when it was hard and that's when it like would get to me more you know and then mm. when i realized and came to you know came to the reality that i was like okay this is how it is now and that's fine that's great you know i need to embrace whatever life we're living now and whatever things are happening then it was fine but at the in the very beginning when i was i was still str struggling inside myself that's when it was sort of hitting me harder than you know yeah 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 it's it's a compounding effect you know one thing you already struggle with and then it comes another thing and, and like, another it, thing it's exactly that painful spot you know and it's like oh my <laughs> <laughs> i feel you i understand i totally understand it um okay uh i'll skip that one because we talked already about the the uh, baby life we we already explored that baby life um but uh two more things that i wanted to get into uh biggest advice for the woman's half um one never single stop advice. doing your own thing like okay in that sense like it does it fit to your answer sort of yeah yeah it fits it fits yeah yeah keep yeah. keep searching keep doing it's just i think that in the beginning it's like also very hard to like just dive in and only try to be the the wife because everything sort of points you that direction you mm -hmm. know because yeah. then it's like oh okay, you're away from everyone you're here for your husband with your husband you know so like everything is sort of like oh you know you can easily lose yourself like you mm -hmm. lose your identity and just mm -hmm. just be there you know and then when you realize that you when it might be happening that's when it's really tough because like i think you know you need to go back to the things that like makes you happy and make you who you are and like mm -hmm. keeps you know keeps that fire in you yeah as well as because then it's more fun for everyone you know what i mean <laughs> like you know it's more fun for the husband too like when it's yes like, you know you have you have a person next to you who's like i don't know well read well you know like the little things it doesn't have to be like i'm not saying that you just do you you have to like i don't know leave the husband travel the world you know <laughs> but like you just not leave like permanently but i'm saying like just travel yeah. all the time or something like but you just yeah just small things can can put that fire in you and then it's overall a better deal for everyone be basically be your own personality which also gives a little bit different color in the relationship because you can't just be you know like nobody wants to have somebody at home who's just like doing nothing just being you know like you want to have some sort of exchange when you come at home you want to have conversations you want to talk about things essential things that matter in life you want to have deeper conversations so you have to have some sort of personality and be your own girl basically right be your own for woman sure. girl yeah, at sure. girl at heart i'm a boy at heart but i'm a you know <laughs> grown-ups um so last one and that's a big one What's the biggest advice for the men's half? Like, I mean, you've 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 probably you and Brock went through different situations and probably had a lot of lot of different uh, situations arise. But what's the one biggest uh, advice you have for the men's half? I think the one thing that I'm very proud of Brock and like I'm very happy that he's the way he is. Like the support. It's like you know he would try to understand when I was going through the like the tougher time mm -hmm. that okay like this is what's happening now and like he would always say like look there's you can do anything like just find that thing that you want to do but you know it's then again from his side it's like easy to say you know what i'm going you know what i mean yeah it's yeah. very nice of him to say nonetheless so um i think the support is very important because like no matter what the the player himself is going through like having that person next to you like he needs to understand that the sacrifices are made from that side too you know it's not just like yeah oh, like you know i'm ball and i'm living this this i mean cool life cool it's a cool life like it's you know it's tough at times it's cool at times it's it's you know it's what it is but like so you need they need to understand sort of that and i i am sure majority of them really do that the person next to them has made the sacrifice too like it's not just you know yeah it's not easy but yeah it's it's a certain amount of um, emotional intelligence it, that it takes to understand that there is also a, a a sacrifice being made on the other side, which also can 
vice versa, it can flip around easily at some point, you know, like there's, there's some, some sacrifices have to be made maybe later by Brock, who knows, like nobody knows, like when, when he, when he's finishing his career, whatever, whenever that's going to be, he, and I talked to some players who have already finished their career. So there's a certain, there's challenges that will come as well, where you like identity crisis, where you're questioning certain things, the next steps, your, your, who you are, because you're not living in a team anymore. So there isn't there's a, there has to be a mutual understanding and mutual intellectual exchange of like going inside yourself understanding the situation this is what it is and somehow resolving both sides like you know it, it has to be a, a an open communication in terms of uh resolving and understanding the sacrifice that's being made at that moment so kudos to to brock for being understandable understanding yeah, he yeah. He's, he's very amazing for that i'm very i'm very i'm very happy Definitely. He's, he's, you know, I hope I've helped him a little bit, but he's also helped me through this, you know, road that we're taking. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. For sure. It's a, it's a windy road, you know, and, and you discover, you both discover certain things and different things at the same time, because you live in together and you're living apart because, you know, the travels, but there's, it's a windy road and there's a lot of exploring to do along the road. And I'm sure you guys have lots of exploring ahead of you together. Yeah, for sure. So Martina, it was fun. It was great. It was very insightful. It's it's those things I always try to dig into, you know, like the identity behind the scenes, you know, like there's a lot of things that the person, per, the person needs to be understood as well. And I felt like you had, you, you painted a really good picture today for, for people outside to understand what it's like to live behind the scenes and what it's like, what life is like. Um, but Tell people how they can find you. Tell uh, if you have any last uh, thoughts about it, about about your life, about your 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 situation. Share and tell people how they can find you. So I think that the, one of the main things that I wanted, like one last thought, is like I ne I never wanted to come across if I did that. I'm that it's like you know, like for outside people, it's. It feels like this, as I said, like, oh, so amazing. But you know, there are also things that are not as amazing, but it, like, it's really hard to understand for like, for people not going through this, you know, like, mm -hmm. oh, you, you guys are living at amazing places all the time and you're like doing this. And, but, but then you think about it, you're like, okay, but then I'm alone a lot or with now with Maverick, with my uh, best pal, <laughs> mm -hmm. but uh, like, and then, you know, we have, little time with Brock together or then we have to move our things like we don't we still don't have a home to this day <laughs> so you know like it's because it really doesn't make sense to to purchase a home yet but like or a car we've not owned a car like <laughs> like this life is weird you know? yeah, like tell that yeah. to somebody who's like yeah you're 31 and you've never owned a car you know it's like sort of like weird things but they're they're they make this life like I guess interesting and uh We'll definitely have some stories to tell, and when we're older, and uh, and even to to our friends who you know who lead different lives and are more settled in one place, and yeah, so that's it. And uh, where to find me? It's Martina Moto. Usually, I use my Instagram the most. Then kind of made a promise here that my YouTube will be back, so I'm working on that. And uh, it's also Martina Moto. <laughs> All right. Yeah, if anyone wants to check out uh, my videos, it's called end one on basketnews.com. All right. Yeah, we're all living a unique lifestyle and we're, we're both appreciative of it. And uh, thanks for everybody. Thanks. Thanks, everybody, for listening and for watching. And uh, we'll be back soon with more. Thank you, Martina. And uh, Thank you. best regards to everybody. See ya. Au revoir.